I'm Dan, Dan Rogers from Rogers Fabric and Apparel. This video is 20 reasons not to do business in China. 20, bit, 20 reasons not to have your clothes made in China. Here's the, the official title. 20 reasons to ditch China in 2024. Don't make these rookie mistakes that everyone else is making. Okay, so you're a fashion entrepreneur. You're trying to start your own clothing line. That's awesome. But before you jump head first into Alibaba and just go with the first Chinese manufacturing factory that you see, take a pause so you don't waste your money and you don't risk your brand new fashion brand destroy your own reputation before it even starts. So I'm going to give you the 20 reasons right now. One, ethical concerns, forced labor, child labor, unsafe working conditions. These are rampant in Chinese factories, not to mention slavery. <laughs> Two, quality control nightmares, giant mega factories sponsored by the government and built by corruption. I mean, it just goes to reason they don't care about quality as much as you do. So you're gonna get inconsistent quality. You're gonna get frequent defects. There's gonna be a communications breakdown whenever you're trying to deal. A majority of Chinese factories. I'm not gonna say all. Obviously, some people have good experiences, but many more people have bad ones. <laughs> we all know this. Now, you're a new brand, so you might not worry as much about intellectual property theft as a, a, a more established brand does, but just know 100% it's gonna happen if you deal with China. They're going to take your designs, sell you their service to make them, and then they're gonna go on their other Alibaba account post your designs on there and sell them to other people for much cheaper in bulk. That's it, you are their business. They take your ideas and then they resell them. It's only number four. That's only number four and I already need my coffee break. Um, hidden costs, there are gonna be hidden fees. Um, depending on where you're from, if you're from America, the, the shipping fee, what used to be super cheap, not so super cheap anymore. There are more tariffs. Um, and taxes placed on your goods. Don't expect to grow if you got a Chinese factory. If, you, if you're gonna up your production, you're gonna get hurt at the port, all right? Or you're gonna get, you're gonna get banged up on shipping. On shipping. Um, all right, now this probably, this next one, this is number six. It probably uh, applies to more than just China, but this is just about me and China. Communication barriers. Um, the, you're, you're, you're manufacturing overseas a country that primarily doesn't speak English. Um, so there's just gonna be communication problems. At Rogers Fabrics and Apparel, there's no communication problem. A native English speaker. So everything you imagine in your head and you say, I can understand and imagine the same thing. There will be no cultural crossed wires. Um, there's not gonna be any misinterpretations. So there's no, there's not gonna be any mistakes because you didn't explain something in a way that I didn't understand, right? Which often happens, you know? Um, there are just different key words, different vocabulary words, different um, translations for different parts of a garment. So yeah, Google Translate is not your friend in these cases. You might say collar in English, um, but the uh, collar might refer to multiple parts of a, uh, of a, of a garment in Chinese. I don't know for sure. I know in Vietnam, it, it works like that. Um, and I know in Philippines, where also, where, where Rogers uh, FBA Fabrics and Apparel uh, is, we create your document, we create your, <laughs> not your document, where we create your garments. Even though we speak English in the shop sometimes, they just have completely different words for the same thing. There's definitely always, always a communication breakdown when you deal with a Chinese factory. I don't care how good your your rep is that you get, you are making allowances for uh, their lower level of English. It, that's what's happening. It, even though they may, you may, in the end, get something that you are satisfied with, that experience of getting there, that climbing the mountain, as they say, <clears throat> is full of hardship that you are just forgetting because you know you have some clothes at the end. All right, let's go to number seven. Number seven is uh, long lead times. Um, now this may not, again, this is not just China. 
but it can take a long time to get your clothes. It's not really super negative, but if you're a small brand just starting out, it can take a long time to get your clothes. One, because you go to the back of the line. You, any factory you're dealing with in China, you're new, you're in the back. They get a, they get a million bargain hunters a day, um, and those bargain hunters get the, get the big uh, minimum order quantities. And so you trying to start, you got no hope. You're at the back. Your, your sewing comes last, your communication, your e you get your emails at the end of the day. And um, when it's time to pack up everything for shipping, yours is, it just gets in wherever it fits in with some larger order communication. Um, political risks, at least I, you know, where I'm from, I'm from America. China and America are technically antagonistic. They are not friendly countries right now. They're not friendly, they're, they're not allies. And this, whatever political uh, situations are happening between those two countries, it gets worse and worse. I don't see it getting better. So, I mean, you might start doing business in China and before you get your order, your business is illegal. <laughs> so, you know, it may happen. Deal with friendly countries, you know, don't deal with countries who are enemies of yours. Just, it's just politics and you have to be uh, aware of it. We are not in any um, non-allied countries. So you're always gonna, you don't have to worry about politics when you deal with Rogers Fabrics and Apparel. You give us your order, we make it, we ship it. No hidden taxes and fees, no punishment because you're using, you know, slavery. Uh, number 10. Now it's just rising labor costs. The economy in China is not good. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> Um, as much as they may want to lie and say it's good, it's not good because they have been artificially lowering the cost of everything. The government has been forcing prices to stay low, but there's too many people doing too many of the same things. Their prices are going up, right? Prices are going up. And you can see that in the cost of fabric. Even, I mean, even I, even we here at Rogers can't um, avoid the rising cost of some of the fabrics that are made in China, right? So uh, you don't want to do, you don't want to have to deal with that kind of stuff. You don't want to deal with that kind of business. It's just 11, bad PR. If you say, uh, yeah, my clothes are made in China, <laughs> you do not have a good image. It's not good for your brand image to be made in China. There are too many negative aspects to that society. I'm not saying there's anything bad or wrong with the Chinese people, but that country has some problems that you don't want your brand to be connected. It's just that simple. It's bad for your image. I don't, it doesn't matter if the price is, is right. And that's another thing. That's why China is the reason you don't know the names of manufacturers right now. There's the business side of the of China is just so bad that every brand that has made garments has had to distance itself from the actual process of making their clothes because, because they can't. They can't say my clothes were made by XXX factory because people are going, oh, what's XXX factory? And they're going to look and they're going to see, oh, that's three dead people sewing clothes, <laughs> right? It's not good. 2024 and onward, you need to... Your brand is going to be uh, visible. People are going to research. They're going to see where your clothes come from. And you want them to see something that they like. You don't, you don't want them to see some shadiness. As a new brand, you're dealing with one of these mega factories. You're just going to have limited customization options. I say this all the time. The, 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 the factories over in China, they buy or they keep their um, fabric in advance, they buy their fabric in advance, upcharge it and resell it to you for your own project and try to guilt you into using their stuff instead of, they try to guilt you into using their fabric, which is artificially inflated price so that they can make up the loss of having to buy it in advance. It's not good. So they're gonna limit your customization. They're gonna say, oh, you need to use blah, blah, blah. We have blah, blah, blah here. It's a great price, blah, blah, blah. But a real factory will go out and find the exact fabric you need to make you happy. You know, even if it takes time and it takes energy, they're gonna 
but at a, at a Chinese place, they're going to be like, oh, are you going to send us the fab fabric you want? Are you going to find it yourself? Are you going to have it shipped to us at our factory without us doing any work? Then no, you need to use our fabric. Our fabric. That's what they'll do, and it's not right. Don't don't fall for it. Other people are falling for it. They, they, I've seen brands, great designs, great brands come and go, just like a flash in the pan, because they're dealing with these bad manufacturers. Quality. Every shop will put their effort into the first um, sample. The sample. Here's why. Here's what happens. You, you order, you say, okay, give me blah, blah, blah. It comes, you, you get your sample, you're like, oh, this is great. And then inevitably after that, you get a, a, a pack of 100 of whatever design and they look like shit. And you say, what happened? Do they just not care about me? That's not quite it. Here's what happened. So samples are made by sample makers. What are sample makers? Sample makers are experts at sewing and construction and, uh, and, and uh, garment design. They are just the experts in the field. These are the people who have been doing it, who have studied it, and who have the knowledge and skills to do a really good job. It's made by that one person. After that, at a Chinese factory, your clothes are made by unskilled laborers. Slaves and children sometimes. I'm not naming names, but slaves, children, unskilled laborers, uh, overworked people who have no business doing, who have no business making your clothes. They just sit and they're told to do this. Do this one thing over and over all day. Like, But a garment is a work of art. It requires skill, expertise, uh, love, and attention and caring in order to do it right. That's why our, the things we made, make are made, every piece is made by an expert who can make your entire garment well. So yeah, that's why the quality falls off whenever, that's why you hear so many of these horror stories about people who have bad times with Alibaba because they, they just get tricked. Don't get tricked. Um, okay, number 14, environmental impact. Um, all right, so there's just a bad carbon footprint. China is not environmentally friendly. They don't care about uh, environmental concerns. They are, they are actively building coal mines. There, there's no... There, all of the environmentalism that China talks about is lip service. It's not real. So their construction process, chemical, 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 and not only chemical, you dump the, dump the, the uh, excess chemicals right in the, in the river outside. There's no protections. There's no oversight. In the places where we manufacture, People have to live there, and the government cares about the conditions in which its people live. So there are tight controls on this kind of thing. Um, and we, even ourselves as Rogers uh, Fabrics and Apparel, uh, attempt always to source um, sustainably produced goods. Either it's locally made, um, or it's like specifically uh, sold and marketed as sustainably sustainably made and so that we can trust that we are not we want to make good clothes we also want to make a good planet have a good planet to live on as well so I mean that's just one of the things I personally care about so Rogers um, we do try our best to protect the environment mm. And we often use recycled materials, okay? Don't forget that. Um, fabrics, we use leftovers. We uh, recycle, we, we actually take recycle, uh, recycle fabrics, um, 
donations from uh, other factories who would normally trash their stuff, will take uh, their uh, excess material and repurpose it. All right, we do. Uh, every time we do a, 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 a sample job or, and prototyping, it's always uh, reusing uh, excess material, other materials. So we offer free design service and part of that is prototyping your garment. The very first thing that we make might be like a patchwork of whatever, just because sustainability and we it's important. Um, 15 is supply chain disruptions. I don't want to talk too much about the politics of China, but whatever. They, they have their government and they have their political situation. And so when some situation happens in the homeland, they can cut themselves off from the rest of the world. Just like that. No if, ands, or buts. It happens. You know, think about um, during the pandemic, a lot of a lot of factories had to shut down because they just couldn't they couldn't import or export anything. It happens. Um, and it, and and it's so again, I don't want to talk too much, but it, the the government has a habit of overreacting too quickly. All right, that's it. Whatever that means, they overreact too quickly. It can lead to things like bans on Japanese goods. Just, just because there's some thing in another sector with Japan and China over some island or something. It, oh, no more Japanese goods are allowed. And even though that may not be the letter of the law, uh, because of the way the government works, if one person at the top says something, everyone else um, over overreacts and and to prove their loyalty. So, so even though you know it may not be illegal to have Japanese goods in any location, if you have Japanese goods, then you get the you get the beat down or you get disappeared or something. It's really it's. Don't be a fool. Don't ruin your brand before it starts and, and do business in China. 2024 is the year. Don't, don't waste your time. Don't make this mistake. Too many, too many uninformed people have made this mistake over the years. You don't need to be one of them. Number 17. Uh, I think I'm on 17. I really, I think I'm on 17. Alternatives. There are plenty of ethical alternatives to Chinese manufacturing. Philippines, Vietnam, India. There's plenty. All right. And the, and the prices are not higher. Right? It's a myth that the Chinese have the lowest, lowest prices. That's not true. That's just not true. Um, business is business. Every place will increase their prices as they become bigger and better. That's normal. Um, so the, the, these newer markets that are gaining traction, that's where, that's where the deals are. Rogers Fabrics and Apparel. I'm in Vietnam right now. You can get a t-shirt here for $250. Right? We can make your t-shirt with the printing and the labels and the tech. Everything, $250 a unit. And then boom, you're done. And you're selling your, you know, the highest quality, 100%, you know, cotton 200 GSM t-shirt with the fine printing, oversized. You sell it for 20, you got it for two, you sell it for 20. That's a 10X product. I mean, that's 10X right there. Do they have that, that price in, in China? Yes. But should you use, should you use a Chinese factory over a Vietnamese one or over one in the Philippines? 
No, you shouldn't. For all of the reasons, all of the 16 reasons I said before this, and before number 18, protect your brand. It's important, all right? Your brand represents a lifestyle, right? The people who buy your clothes, they want to be included into a group that's meaningful to them. Very few people find it meaningful to be in the, the Made in China group. That's just not an attractive offering. Don't do it. But you know what people do like? Um, to be in a group that supports ex-sweatshop workers, like we have on our team. We have people who work worked in sweatshops, you know, the same long hours, low pay, struggling to survive and provide for their family. We take, we, we, we give them a better opportunity to utilize their skills to make you some excellent clothes for fair compensation. You know who wants to be associated with that kind of brand? Everybody. You want to, you want to know who wants to be associated with recycling materials and reusing old materials and, and sustainable construction and, and using, um, um, eco-friendly fabrics that, that we, we can go and source specially for you, right? Without adding a whole bunch of extra charges and trying to guilt you into using our, you know, left, our, our, our pre-bought synthetic junk that we up, upcharge. Don't fall into that trap. Number 19. It's related to number 18. You want to support people who are worth supporting, right? Those ex-sweatshop workers, women-led teams, minorities, eco-conscious eco shops. Um, we, we all want to do our part to uplift as many people as we can in the world. Just... It doesn't take much. You you want to build your brand. You don't have to pay any more money than you normally would, and you can help people. That's a win-win-win. Just do it. Help help people and get what you want at the same time. Let those people make a lot of money, and you make m more money. Um, and then number 20 is... Trust? Oh, I forgot what number 20 was. You don't want to trust. It's difficult to trust a shop that one is difficult to communicate with. There's a bunch of secrecy, right? In China, they have a separate internet. You can't even see what they think or what their influences are. Or, I mean, there's one, there might be one person in the shop telling you whatever you want to hear so that they can get your money. But that's not, come on, you can't trust that. And then in the, in, in the back, right behind uh, your, your, your rep, your rep, oh, Sonny, Junie, or whatever their name is, so great. Um, my rep is so great, but they work at, they're re repping a factory full of slaves. <laughs> full, full of overworked and underpaid Adults and minors, all right? It's, you can't trust, and I'm not trying to be xenophobic. I'm simply saying it's 2024. There's a whole world. Don't get caught up in the marketing of the past about this Chinese manufacturing. Quality is not there. Communication is not there. Um, uh, transparency is not there. These are all common knowledge. You know it. Don't be like others. Give your brand a good, solid foundation to build off of so that you can, so you can get a, a strong community of people willing to support you and, and, and join into your mission and your brand image. And you do that by partnering, by partnering with manufacturers who are transparent, right? For example, um, if you 
work with us. If you work with Rogers Fabric and Apparel, you get daily videos of your garments under construction, pictures. You get interviews with the actual seamstresses who are sewing your garments. Who else is doing that? And like about your garments, not, oh, I love working at blah, 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 mega factory. They let me have one day off per week. No, no, no. <laughs> it's a, uh, it's a, uh, oh, are you, you, uh, yeah, tell us about what it's like working for new brand X. And they'll say, oh, the, the one with the, the dress, the A-line dress. Oh, I really like this dress. It's so pretty. And I, I like it because uh, the blah, 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 we added a pocket or there's a nice little whatever design. They, they're going to know your, your garment. The people who sew your garment know what it is. They'll know about your brand. You can, yes, you can and should. Feature them in your marketing if that's part of your brand image, right? So that the community you build feels good about wearing your clothes. It's only, not, I mean, it's only natural, normal, common business sense. You want the people who wear your clothes to feel good about it. So they should get some human interest stories. They're going to see everything being constructed, the people making it. Um... Our shop is an open shop, um, so you can see what we do on social media. Uh, and if you work with us, you'll get a lot of in-depth, just in-depth information about everything that goes into making your clothes so that you can use it in your marketing. Trust, that's it. You don't have to trust me I'm just a, a guy. I'm trying to sell you my services. But uh, when you see everything you get, then you don't have to trust me. You trust your eyes. You trust your ears. That's it. Don't be, don't be a sucker. Don't get pulled in by uh, Chinese manufacturing in 2024 and beyond. You're going to get left behind. Your brand... Your brand, your project, your company will benefit by expanding beyond that old bullshit. Don't do it. Just do something else. You don't even have to go with us. If you go with us, we're the best. I mean, you're going to see everything. You're going to get the best stuff. But find whatever you want that's not Chinese manufacturing. That's it.